Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Elitist Geek. I just want to do a quick update video on the NVIDIA 1080. What I want to do is, and for anyone who hasn't seen, that was the card that I ended up purchasing, right? And one of the reasons I went for this card, this generation over AMD, was that little bit of advertising right there. And we'll get into that in this video. But like with the AMD video, I, I want to separate fact from fiction, marketing from hype, and let's try to just look at the facts and be honest about what this card can do, could do, uh, and what it's currently doing. Really, that's what it boils down to. So, I've had the card a couple of weeks now. Uh, what are the things that I've noticed? Well, it's been fantastic for 1080p. And primarily, that's the resolution that I game at. So I've got a three monitor set up here, 27 inch, 224s, running 1080p. I have a 70 inch TV over here, also connected, 1080p. But I do have one 4K monitor in the house, and that's a 50 inch 4K monitor that my wife and I currently have in our master bedroom. So what I would like to eventually do is get a 4K monitor. And that's what we're gonna get into. Why don't I have one now? Well, there's a reason for that. And we'll get to that near, near the end of this video. But there was a new driver released uh, just within the last few days. Um, I believe it was beta and it's gone live now. It's NVIDIA's 368.39 driver. And what's cool about this driver is that it adds Pascal-specific VR Works support. And going back to the marketing thing and the sticker that I showed you on the box, VR Works is the touted uh, VR solution to you know, allow enhanced stereo rendering for the Pascal architecture, i.e. 1070, 1080, and future upcoming cards. So, it's pretty cool, they've added the support, but this is where we gotta separate hype from marketing. And let's look at the facts. The facts, currently, Unity, Unreal Engine 4 are the only engines that are going to include VR works so far. So that leaves a lot of games and engines that will not have that VR work support. So, again, the reason I got the card was twofold. That, but I also wanted the non VR works brute force GPU power to power virtual reality uh, as it current in its current incarnation, right? Faster than what I had, but realizing it's not completely optimist, optimized. So just throw brute force and ignorance at it, which the 1080 does do well. So let's remember that. that a lot of what they marketed is very specific to just, right now, to just two game engines, Unity, Unreal Engine 4. Now, the Unreal one is exciting, but let's face it, Unity is mostly a Android, Apple iOS uh, set of development tools. While it's being increasingly used in Windows, and Wasteland 2 is a perfect example of that, one of my favorite games of, of last year that has been designed in Unity. So it's gonna take a while more, this patience that we've had, right? Us early adopters who've purchased both the 1080 and who may have a Rift or a Vive, we've gotta sit tight a bit more, uh, but that's part of the challenge of being an early adopter. Anybody who rushes out and grabs a console on day one knows that other than launch titles, they're gonna have to wait. I mean, it took the PS3 at least two years to really get traction. And that's when the game started really pumping out around 2008, right? Even you could argue late 2008 is kind of really when it came in its own and it's no difference for the current PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, right? So when games do take advantage of this, I expect them to just excel. They will be awesome VR experiences for those of us who have both the card 
and the HMDs, right? Either the Rift or the Vive or both. Now, just to go into VR works a bit deeper, it's not just about VR graphics. So most people know that uh, physics, the physics, you know, programming development side of game engines is something NVIDIA has really made a push for with their PhysX, right? And in fact, you see that PhysX power increasingly, right? But what they want to do with VR works is they also want to add in sound. So they're really kind of touting the sound capabilities, the virtual reality sound. And they will continue to do the PhysX. So that's kind of like a three prong approach to VR for NVIDIA. So as I mentioned, it's just Unity, Unreal Engine 4 at this point. Um, and that makes sense that places like Digital Foundry and, you know, fanboy crap aside, like I said, I am seriously hardware, platform, and game agnostic. And I can't stress that enough. I haven't taken sides. And that's why I want to be honest with the, the shortcomings of the NVIDIA 1080, because there's certainly a lot of shortcomings. I mentioned a few of those already, right? So anybody watching this, I don't have a vested interest in either. For me, it's always been about the games. The games, period, full stop. And whatever I need to do to push that experience, you know, to that next level, I will do. Whether it's AMD Crossfire, NVIDIA SLI, uh, upgrading my video card, that's what it's about for me, right? So let's be real about what the 1080 can and can't do. So again, if you are purchasing it right now as an early adopter, realize that the potential of this card hasn't even begun to be tapped yet. The main potential you're benefiting from right now is simply what I said earlier, and that's brute force and ignorance. It is powering games sheerly on its technical capability, which luckily for us is, you know, in a lot of benchmarks faster than the 980 Ti, regular 980s and SLI, it can beat them, uh, you know, 50% of the time, 50% of the time it doesn't. That was enough for me to make the decision to purchase the card because I recognized full well the cards that it's up against are fully mature cards. And the Pascal architecture is still so new that we're only going to see the card go up in performance. It's not going to go down. So if this had been a case where it was performing worse than those cards, I wouldn't have done the upgrade. I did the upgrade because of brute force. There was enough brute force there to power it to where I'm happy, right? So as we see, and, and where I was going with that is that the benchmarks from Digital Foundry, they show very poor scaling for the 1080 from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12 compared to a card like the Fury X, right? Absolutely, there's no denying that. It's, it's pretty clear, the scaling is not that great. It's a couple of frames usually, but there's so much more headroom, so much more room to grow for this card, and that is the exciting part, and that's what we have to look forward to. We just gotta re, uh, ride out this early adopter phase, right? So I'm curious how stuff like Vulcan, which is very hardware specific in how it communicates. It's kind of like in the old days, uh, for anybody who doesn't know about programming, you may have heard of stuff like programming in C or C++, right? Well, back in the 80s, a lot of times, programmers didn't use those libraries that are commonplace now because they had to ring every megahertz. The Commodore 64 was a one megahertz machine running on 64K of memory. Yes, it had a dedicated video uh, card, but programming most games in C at that point in time would have killed it. Um, certain games, turn-based stuff like Fantasy, which was a fantastic game, that was actually written partially in BASIC. Um, but again, it was super clunky and slow. So what most programmers did to ring you know, that ultimate efficiency out of an old computer like that is they would do their programming in what was called assembly language. And assembly language is, you know, one step up from machine code, binary, you know, zeros and ones. You're basically able to communicate with hardware directly. 
not all these layers in between. And that's what gets, has me excited about stuff like Vulcan. As we see that mature over the next few months and years, we should really see the performance peak up. So for me, what happened with VR support? And I've got some really cool videos coming up where I'm gonna talk about, uh, where I'm gonna show benchmarks and I'm gonna go through all the games that you guys requested. I'm gonna throw some extra stuff in there uh, and I hope to have that up either later tonight, tomorrow by the afternoon at the latest, um, just to show you the brute force and ignorance this card is capable of, right? So the other piece of hype to dispel is the 1080p at this point in time is not a good 4K card, all right? Kind of touched on that at the beginning of the video, but there are enough games right now that you, while you can play them in 4K, if you think of this card as being able to deliver 60 frames per second 4K gaming, sadly, that's not reality. At this point in time, it's not happening. Certainly there are games that's capable of powering but uh, there are a lot of games that it just can't deliver at 60 frames per second. It comes a little closer overclocked, but the stock Founders Edition, like the one I have, just can't do it, right? But again, for me, that wasn't huge because I wanted specifically a 1080p video card that could allow me to run everything on maximum settings. So I basically never have to tweak a game again, right? Of course, I got VR now, so I am tweaking because, you know, that takes over, but that's where that future VR works and uh, stuff has me hopeful, right? That that lowest common denominator will be able to bring that up. So I'm super stoked about that, super stoked about those uh, videos that I have coming up, the benchmark videos. Just wanted to give you all this update uh, on my 1080. Am I happy with it? In summary, absolutely. Um, you know, I mentioned before, I was very disappointed with my R9 290s. They were fast cards, they were good hardware but stuff just wasn't very optimized for them. And for me personally, Crossfire support was really bad. Like I mentioned in that other video, there wasn't one game I can think of that benefited me uh, in Crossfire, where I said, no, this has to be the, the Crossfire experience for this game. There wasn't. Uh, most of the times it didn't work. When it did work, the returns you know, usually came at some kind of price, flickering graphics, what, what have you, right? So absolutely, I'm happy with the 1080. I still can't do full, you know, 90 FPS, all options cranked VR gaming, but that's just gonna get better. But my, my that lowest common denominator has gone up. It has extremely gone up. I can crank stuff at least medium, many high settings and get 90 frames per second, just not ultra, right? So let me know if uh, any of you guys purchased a 1080. I'd be interested in hearing what you're, because I know some of you, a few of you have purchased a 1080, right? So I just want to keep it real for everybody. All hype aside, that's the scoop. That's where I'm at. That's where the card's at. And that's hopefully where the card is going. All right, guys, as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and cheers.